progress has been made, but many companies are moving at a glacial pace. That's the opinion of our next guest in commenting on the push to get more women on boards of directors in Canada. Joining us in the studio is Jennifer Reynolds, President and CEO of the Advocacy Group, Women in Capital Markets. Good morning. Good morning. Now, it's been about 60 minutes, uh, 60 minutes, six months ago mm -hmm. uh, since the regulators put in these, uh, uh, these guidelines mm -hmm. for encouraging more women uh, to be on boards. Where are we? How have we progressed? You say it's glacial. Yes. Well, I mean, I think that we've seen, to speak about the positive first, we've seen uh, some movement in larger companies. I think there we've seen uh, more, the proportion of women on boards go up. We're at, for the TSX 60, about 20% um, right now. Uh, so that's good. We've seen those bigger companies focus on having policies around increasing the proportion of women on boards. However, uh, overall, uh, I think there was a study done recently by Tories, the law firm, and it looked at uh, people who had reported since this new disclosure came into place. Uh, in the S&P TSX uh, index. And so there was 179 already who had reported, so about 70% of them had reported, and close to half did not have a policy. So basically, close to half said, pretty much we don't really care about that and we're not going to consider that. So I think that's very disappointing. Uh, I think we need this to be a far more broad-based uh, effort in corporate Canada and uh, I think certainly that at the very least companies can take a hard look at what sorts of policies should we have uh, around board diversity. So uh, I think we need to see a big push. I think we need to see uh, this, the spotlight on this issue to, to, to continue to put the spotlight on this issue because clearly we haven't permeated enough of the boardrooms of Canada at this yeah, point. Do we have any reason why there's such a significant portion of these companies that have no plan or no policy in place? Well, I think, you know, it hasn't been on the agenda for a long time. I think it's starting to be on the agenda. Uh, it's starting to become a part of the discussion, and I think that the OSC clearly pushed that forward. I mean, that's the reason it's on the agenda today, is this, the OSC said, this must be on the agenda for boards. It's important, and the question is, why is it important, and why should we all care? And, you know, there is a business case for this. This isn't about social justice. The fact is, there have been many, many studies, the most recent by Credit Suisse, which demonstrate that regardless of industry, if you have more women on your boards, more women in senior leadership, you have better shareholder returns, and you're more profitable. So Canadian companies should care about this, and Canadian directors, because it's about competitiveness, and it's about our economy um, you know, being more profitable and competitive. So that should be important to everybody. So the OSC has said, we need to focus on this. Uh, everybody, put your thinking caps on here. Uh, let's first of all disclose the numbers. Everybody has to disclose the proportion of women on their boards and in senior leadership positions. And then also, do you have a policy? Uh, and and, and, and thirdly, uh, are you setting targets around that? It, does the board have uh, a target for where they'd like to be in terms of board representation or uh, the proportion of women in senior leadership too? The Minister for Federal Status of Women, uh, women want 30% in five mm -hmm. years. Is that realistic? It's absolutely realistic. We can certainly get there. The talent pool is deep. And so this is always the dialogue, is we have many boards and many of those who sue didn't even put a policy in place. Uh, their reason was, you know, we put people on board because of merit. So what that implies is, you know, according to their the work that they've done for decades, they haven't been able to find any women who've merited being on the board. And, and you know, it just, that is it's just... a lame excuse. It's I pretty lame. Know. I mean, let's be serious. For, we have 40% of the companies uh, in the index who have no women on their boards. So they're saying that they couldn't find one woman uh, who merited being on that board. I think we know that's not the case. I think it's, it's just laziness and inertia. People want to continue to do things the way they've done them in the past and, you know, go to the people they know in their network, and those people in the network are men. Uh, so they need to start looking elsewhere. Uh, it, it isn't, you know, to say it's we only promote on merit, that's not the issue here. The issue is how are you recruiting and what are the methodologies behind that. And I think that if you really thought you were actually recruiting based on merit, why wouldn't you be just fine being transparent about how you recruit? Uh, who's doing it the best? What industry? Well, I think uh, that, you know, the financial sector is doing the best. I think they've been focused on this for, for quite a long time, longer than others. Uh, their numbers in terms of the representation on their boards are about an average for the large institutions, about 34%. Um, the proportion of women in senior leadership is much higher. It's around 23 24%. So much better than other industries. Uh, I, I think uh, just, just as importantly, or perhaps even more importantly, uh, the banks have also been focused on really important ways to improve gender diversity, uh, work around unconscious bias, work around um, how are we recruiting, how are we developing talent, and having more formal talent management. And, and so those efforts are at a very different stage than other, many other companies. So you know, I truly believe that you know, financial institutions can lead here, have the opportunity to lead here. Who's the worst? 
Well, I think we all know. <laughs> I think if you look at the resources industries, that's where we're going to see the worst uh, representation of women on boards. If you, you know, it's anywhere, you know, seven, eight percent, that sort of thing. Having said that, if we look at um, another another country which implemented the comply or explain regime is Australia. So clearly, you know, very resource oriented economy as well, just like our own. It's a bit uh, ironic given the um, uh, the the mentality that we think of with Australians, that mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of ahead of the curve here. Exactly. Yeah. That's an excellent point. And, and, you know, they were behind the curve, or slightly behind Canada. In 2010, they were about 8% on their boards. And now they're up to about 19%. But that is as a result of, you know, the government pushing hard, leadership in, in the corporate world. They're pushing very, very hard to say, this is important to our economy. we got to broaden out the talent pool, and we need to fix this problem. And so we need to see the same thing happen in this country for uh, not just, it's great, we need the government to put the pressure on. We need the OSC uh, to continue to make sure and uh, that this disclosure is robust and that people take this seriously uh, and report on it. Uh, but I think we really, really need the senior leaders in Canada, the, the men that are currently sitting at the table, uh, to take a very active role here uh, and, and to make sure that they're encouraging their colleagues uh, and their peers on other boards to, to look at, first of all, the business case, why should you do it, and then secondly, uh, you know, to, to make sure that their company is moving forward. We're going to make progress on this issue. And, and what what should senior uh, executives who are female, what should they be doing? Well, I think clearly we have a, you know a role as women in senior leadership positions to 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 keep that pressure on, and I think I think we certainly always have been. But I, I can't really you know the stress the importance of men getting involved in this as well. It really does take men to move the dial on this, just because they are sitting in those chairs right now, um, and it's a cultural change that we're seeking, right? We don't want and we don't want women put in seats because oh, there's my one woman. Okay, let's drive on and focus on other board issues and, and running the company. We want a cultural change where the, where women are valued, uh, not just on the board, but in senior leadership. And so that involves men and women recognizing what each one brings to the table and what diversity brings to the table as opposed to just, you know, a bunch of people who are quite alike. <laughs> Jennifer Reynolds, thank you very much. Thank you very much.